Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to teach you how to convert standard notation to scientific notation. But before we start converting standard notation, what is scientific notation? Scientific notation, it is used in expressing a very large or a very small number written as a product of two factors. First factor, a number equal to or greater than 1 but less than 10. And the second factor is an integer with a power of 10. So when we say written as a product of two factor, ito yon. A times 10 raised to n. Wherein A, yung A is the first factor. Ulitin ko ha, yung A, siya yung ating first factor. And then yung 10, siya naman yung ating second factor. And always remember, pag sinabi nating first factor, dapat number ng first factor natin ay equal or greater than 1 but less than 10. Yung second factor naman natin na 10, lagi yung 10 ha, hindi yan nagbabago. Meron kayong nakikitang n, that is exponent. Pag sinabi nating exponent, it is an integer. Now let's proceed to the steps in writing standard notation to scientific notation. So first, Place the decimal point after the first non-zero digit. Ulitin ko. Place the decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So, pag sinabi natin non-zero, hindi siya zero na number. Next, count the number of places the decimal point has moved until the given number will have a one-digit whole number and the rest will be all decimals. Next, the number of places in step 2 is the absolute in the exponent in 10. Step 3, if the movement of the decimal point is going to the left, the exponent is positive. And if it is going to the right, the exponent is negative. So, to understand it further, I have here an example. So, for example, we have... 48 billion and we are going to convert it in scientific notation so first step place the decimal point in this example wala kang nakikitang decimal point di ba laging tatandaan na merong decimal dyan sa dulo dito sa part na to Kanina, sinabi ko na we should place the decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So, alin dyan ang first non-zero digit? Pag sinabi natin non-zero ha, hindi siya zero na number. So, ano kaya yon? Yes, 4. So, ilalagay natin yung decimal sa pagitan ng 4 and 8. Kasi, as I said, ilalagay ang decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So, magiging ganito na siya. Now, count the number of places. Kapag ang number, wala kang nakitang decimal point, nasa dulo po yan lagi. So, let's count how many places the decimal point move para mapunta siya sa first non-zero digit. So, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, there are 10 movement. Okay? So, merong 10 movement yung decimal point. And since papunta siya sa left side, so positive siya. It will be like this. Kung napapansin nyo, naging 4.8 na lang siya. Kasi lahat ng 0 after non-zero digit, wawala na. So, ngayon, ang ating first factor ay 4.8. Then, times 10 raised to 10. Bakit raised to 10? Kasi, yung bilang ng movement ng decimal point, siya ang magiging exponent natin. 
So, the final answer is 48 billion is equal to 4.8 times 10 raised to 10. Another example, 937,000. So, unang gagawin, place decimal point. So, saan ulit? Sa first non-zero digit. So, tingnan natin ang given. Ano ang unang number na hindi zero? Yes, 9. So, ilalagay natin ang decimal point after ng 9. So, it will become like this. 9.37000. Now, count the number of decimal places. So, ilang movement ba mula sa dulo? Kasi, di ba, kapag wala kang nakikitang decimal point, lagi yung nasa dulo. So, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 movements. So, our answer will be 9.37 times 10 raised to 5. So, bakit naging 9.37? Kasi, yung mga 0, mawawala na yon. Then, idadagdag na lang natin yung second factor which is times 10. Then, kung ilang movement ang ginawa ng decimal point papunta dun sa non-zero digit, yun ang magiging exponent natin. And since 5 movement ang ginawa ng decimal point, 5 ang exponent natin. At dahil papunta rin siya sa left, positive yung ating exponent. Okay, tandaan. Yung times 10 ay laging nandyan ha. Ang nagbabago lang ay ang first factor at ang exponent. Okay, another one. How about if we have this number? So, same process. We put decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So, it will become like this. Now, count the movement of decimal point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so there are 16 movement. So, the exponent will be 16. And the first factor is equal to 8.300012 times 10 raised to 16. Now I know some of you are wondering why is it the three zeros was there? Because the three zeros are between the non-zero digit. Kaya hindi siya nawawala. Only the zeros after the last non-zero digit ang nawawala. So, this will be our final answer. Now, how about if we have this one? So, again, place a decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So, we put it after 4. So, it will be like this. Now, count the number of movement of the decimal point. So, kung napapansin nyo, mayroon na tayo agad dyan decimal point. So, mula dyan, sa decimal point, count tayo papunta dun sa first non-digit number. Okay, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 movement. And as you can see, the movement of the decimal point is going to the right. So, the exponent will be negative. So, negative 5 siya. Therefore, the final answer is 4.59 times 10 raised to negative 5. Another example. Again, put the decimal point in the first non-zero digit. So, ilalagay natin siya after ng 5. So, it will be like this. Now, let's count the movement of decimal point. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there are 6 movement and it is going to the right. So, the exponent is negative. So, therefore, our final answer is 5.03 times 10 raised to negative 6. So, lagi nating tatandaan yung steps on how to, to convert standard notation to 
scientific notation. So, that's all for today. Next lesson naman natin ay yung converting scientific notation to standard notation. So, thank you for watching!